from the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis today announced in the House of Assembly his government's plans through a public-private partnership agreement to unveil a 150-lot subdivision in western New Providence that will be geared strictly to young Bahamians. He said a key element of both near-term economic recovery and long-term inclusive economic growth will be the provision of affordable residential properties and homes. He said, quote, we have already started the service lots program most recently in Carmichael. There, Bahamians are able to secure lots valued at $50,000 or $60,000 for as little as $15,000. He continued, the demand has been overwhelming. Today, I am pleased to advise that through a PPP arrangement, we will soon be unveiling a 150-lot subdivision in Western New Providence that will be geared strictly to young Bahamians. Dr. Mena said this development will have first-class amenities and provisions to allow young Bahamians who qualify to get $150,000 lots for perhaps one-third of the cost. Fire destroyed four residential units in Harbor Island when an unlicensed gas company owned and operated by North Eleuthera MP Ricky Mackey performed services there in June 2018, plaintiffs allege in court documents. An affidavit by a former inspector at the Ministry of Works claims Mr. Mackey's company, Eleuthera Petroleum Limited, did not have the dealer's or sub-dealer's license that is required to sell, store, and convey liquefied petroleum gas to the public, nor did his employees have the installer's license required to connect disconnect or fill liquefied containers. Contravening the licensing requirements of the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Act makes a person liable on summary conviction to a $3,000 fine, 12 months imprisonment, or both according to the law. Plaintiffs entered a $450,646.96 default judgment against Eleuthera Petroleum Limited last year and had the Royal Bank of Canada account connected to the company frozen. Eleuthera Petroleum Company is now seeking to strike out that judgment with its lawyers arguing that COVID-19 prevented the company from submitting a timely defense in the case. The Progressive Liberal Party wants the government to adopt new COVID-19 prevention measures that allows for more virus testing and isolation to help prevent a third wave in the country. In a statement released yesterday, PLP leader Philip Brave Davis urged the Minnis administration to learn from its past mistakes and act now before it is too late to safeguard the country against the new, more contagious COVID-19 strains spreading worldwide. He also said the country could not afford to return to lockdowns, which will only further damage the nation's economy. Former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram is expected to be released from hospital by midweek after showing steady signs of improvement as he recovers from COVID-19. Mr. Ingram, 73, was diagnosed with the coronavirus two weeks ago and admitted to doctor's hospital last Tuesday when his symptoms of shortness of breath and general malaise persisted. Former Minister of Health Dr. Dwayne Sands is part of the team of doctors attending to Mr. Ingram at doctor's hospital. Dr. Sands yesterday described Mr. Ingram as being in good spirits. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo acknowledged for the first time yesterday that some of his behavior with women may have been insensitive or too personal and said he would cooperate with a sexual harassment investigation led by the state's attorney general. In a statement released amid mounting criticism from within his own party, the Democrat maintained he had never inappropriately touched or propositioned anyone, but he said he had teased people about their personal lives in an attempt to be playful. In an industrial neighborhood on the outskirts of Bangladesh's largest city lies a factory with gleaming new equipment imported from Germany. Its immaculate hallways lined with hermetically sealed rooms. It is operating at just a quarter of its capacity. It is one of three factories that the Associated Press found on three continents whose owners say they could start producing hundreds of millions of COVID-19 vaccines on short notice if only they had the blueprints and technical know-how. But that knowledge belongs to the large pharmaceutical companies who have produced the first three vaccines authorized by countries including Britain, the European Union, and the U.S., Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca. The factories are all still awaiting responses. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure continues to dominate the weather over the islands with fresh to moderate breezes and pleasant conditions. Beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution for the risk of rip currents along east and southern coastal beaches. For all areas, it'll be mostly 
sunny and hot this afternoon, becoming fair and warm tonight. Breezy in the southeast Bahamas. Small craft caution is in effect for the southeast Bahamas. Wind southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots. Falling light and variable at times in the northwest Bahamas. Easterly at 10 to 15 knots in the central Bahamas and 15 to 20 knots in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet in the northwest and central Bahamas and 4 to 6 feet in the southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 72. The sun will set this afternoon at 610 and will rise tomorrow morning at 631. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.